Well, for the 2,146 candidates who stepped up to run for public office in this election, the heavy lifting is mostly done and the waiting game is on now. Uh, all of those hours of door-to-door -door campaigning and phone calls and debates and meetings, they've come to an end and all that's left is the verdict from the voters. I'm joined now by four candidates to talk about the campaign and the choices facing voters. Mona Forte is the Liberal candidate for re-election in the riding of ottawa Vanier. John Barlow is the Conservative candidate for re-election in the riding of Foothills in Alberta. He joins us from Heritage Point, Alberta. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Barlow. Angela McEwen. Thanks for having me. Angela McEwen is the NDP candidate for ottawa west Nepean, And Jean-Luc Cook is the Green Party candidate in Nepean. Thank you all for being here. Congratulations on uh, surviving a, a, an election campaign in yeah. Canada. <laughs> and thanks for coming in to give me a bit of your time to talk about uh, what it's been. And uh, I guess let me, let me start there. And Mona Forte, let me start with you. What, what is it you want voters to be thinking uh, as they make their choices about where to mark an X on a ballot? Well, first, to go out and vote is really important. Uh, happy to hear that the advance polls were very high. And uh, hopefully they'll uh, go with a positive plan we're offering as Liberals. And uh, the fact that we want to continue to grow uh, the economy by investing in the middle class and also fight climate change. So jo that's what I'm hoping. All right, John Barlow, what about you? What do you want voters to be thinking today? Well, I, I agree with Mona. I think that the advanced polls were, were incredible. The last few days that we door knocked heading up to election day today was uh, the, the majority of people that we talked to have already voted. Uh, but I think there's a really stark contrast today as people go out and vote. Uh, do they want uh, additional debt and deficit, higher taxes? Or do they want a government that's going to put more money in their pocket, get Canada's financial footing back on a strong foundation? And I think that's really the choice today. All right, Angela McEwen, how about you? Yeah, I mean, what I hear when I go door knocking is people are fed up with the Liberals and the Conservatives. They're tired of people who are out of touch with what's going on in their daily lives. The Liberals are saying that they've made life better for Canadians and seniors are telling me, you know, their OAS has only increased by $20 over the past four years and their rent has increased by um, much more than that. So uh, I think that what uh, we have seen over the course of that campaign is that voters are starting to get to know Jagmeet Singh and they're starting to really respond to the NDP's policies around taxing the rich a little bit more and restoring some of the, the social safety net that's been cut over the past few years. All right, Mr. Cook, how about you? Um, a lot of voters are looking forward to the mudslinging to end. Uh, this is an election that we went into it. Um, there were a couple uh, issues that were top of mind. Climate change was uh, certainly one of them. Um, and I think for a lot of voters it re has remained that way. And all the, all the stories of blackface and uh, the distortions on, on what the issues are um, has really uh, stuck with a lot of people. At the door right now folks are just really tired of hearing uh, the arguments going back and forth and they want to vote and get it over with. Uh, the word minority government is, uh, is top of mind, which means the smaller parties um, have, have a, will have a lot more influence in the coming parliament. So tight races, people are saying, look, uh, this isn't a choice of two bad options. It doesn't matter which way it's going to go. I'm going to vote with my values. I'm going to vote for what I want. All right. Uh, we'll come, come back. To, I want to circle back to some of that in a moment. But Mr. Barlow, let me go to you. The, the campaign's featured a lot of polarization, personal attacks. Uh, I, I think voters tell us that they, they're hearing messages of fear with parties assigning motives to leaders and policies to leaders uh, that just aren't true. It's, it's been less about working together and moving the country forward. Uh, let me ask you, how, how well served do you think the voters have been by this campaign? Well, I think the, the frustration that I've heard certainly from, from voters here in, in southern Alberta is um, that they're not hearing about the issues that are important uh, to Canadians. Uh, and I think the leaders of all the parties are trying to get those messages out there. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the, the media has been focusing on other, other things, whether that's uh, who was born where, who worked where, who wore what. Um, I think it's uh, been kind of a frustration that way that uh, this election is one of the most important in our, in our history, I believe, that uh, there are good policies out there. And, and you look at, uh, we've really tried to focus on, on our policies, keeping a positive conservative vision on what we're going to be doing for Canada. Um, whether that's uh, supporting agriculture, energy, uh, a balanced budget, the economy. These are the things that uh, every door I go to or have been to the last uh, few months, that's what they want to talk about. And, and I don't think it's really been front of mind um, in the mainstream media coverage. All right, uh, Mona Forte, which, what are your views on that? Have voters been well served? Well, um, I'm glad to say that we've knocked on millions of doors and we are organized on the ground and the grassroots movement is happening. So people are really having conversations and uh, 
really proud to say that volunteers are knocking on doors. We're having the important conversations just here in Ottawa Vanier. I mean, I'm having those conversations, and people right, now but, but need have, to go have issues been vote. over have issues been overshadowed by some of well, the mudslinging people talk about. Well, it's the they they wonder what is true. So there are a lot of fake news were 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 sent out, and at the door we have to show our plan and demonstrate what we are offering to Canadians and that's uh, exactly what the volunteers and the parties are our party is doing at the door. Angela McEwen what's your view? Voters well served by the campaign? Um, I mean I think that's up for voters to, to decide. It certainly is a lot of confusing, conflicting narratives out there. The media does like to, to talk about maybe the more exciting things rather than the more substantive things. So we're not digging into some of the the fake news that's out there or the, the spin that parties are putting on their policies. So have we really dug into which is the best climate plan, for example, and what will actually make a difference um, in affordability and meeting our targets? All right, Mr. Cook, how about you? It's, it, it's hard to imagine that that the parties have been trying very hard to get their platforms out. Uh, when every rally the leaders are in, they start talking about the other main opponent as somehow this boogeyman. There, there, there seems to, to be a lot of conversation about why not to vote for the other people as opposed yes. to why to vote for your party or your or, or your leader, right? Yeah, it's 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 really frustrating, and and I understand the temptation. I mean, I'm I'm a it's my third time running. Um, you look at your political opponents and you try and uh, understand how it's us versus them. Uh, Elizabeth May has really uh, set a good example for us in the party, saying you have to you have to really stop that, focus on the issues, talk about the issues, and, and don't paint the, the other parties as some kind of uh, some kind of demons. Uh, you need to focus on the issues, say this is how we're going to do this, and this is why we think it's better than this approach. Okay, so a few minutes left, and let me, Angela McKeown, let me ask you. Uh, the polls suggest that no one is going to win a majority government here, that uh, we're probably headed for a minority parliament. Um, which means that no one party was able to get Canadians to give them majority support. What does that tell you? Yeah, because when I knock on doors, people are really conflicted. They're really, they wonder who to trust. And um, if you remember the beginning of this campaign, people were writing off the NDP completely. It was going to be the end of the NDP. We were going to lose party status. And now um, Jagmeet Singh is, is tied with, uh, with Andrew Scheer for preferred prime minister. So um, we've definitely seen a surge in the NDP, but was, has it been long enough for people to get to know him um, to, to put their vote there? Mr. Barlow, what do you think that, that if we're headed for a minority parliament, what do you think, is there a message being sent by Canadians or is it just the, the mathematical shakedown of the way the, the voting system works in this country or do you think they're, if they're choosing a minority parliament it's because they want that and they want parties to work together? How do you see this? Well, I, I still want to see how this how this shakes out. Uh, certainly a minority is possible. But I, I, I don't think a majority is out of the question and we'll see that later uh, later tonight. Um, but I, I believe that this is one of the most important elections in our history, and, and I think this is about keeping Canada together. Uh, we have seen uh, our current prime minister uh, do division by politics by division, uh, divide you know dividing east versus west, urban versus rural, uh, natural resource and agriculture against activists. Uh, this has been a very frustrating uh, last few months uh, for certainly people in southern Alberta who are extremely frustrated and desperately want change. Uh, I, I think a, a majority is not out of the question. If it is a minority. Uh, we are going to have to, all of us, uh, try and find ways uh, to work together. Um, but, you know, if, there's a, if it's a Liberal NDP uh, coalition, uh, that is going to be very hard on Canadians. That's going to be higher debts, higher taxes. And we're going to have to, they're going to have to make some sacrifices on, on our resource sector, which is the economic engine of this country. Uh, and I think uh, Canadians have to understand what's at stake in this election. I think they will today. All right. If, if it's a minority parliament, I want to forward say, will you take that as a message that says, will parliamentarians be compelled to work together? How will you see that outcome and that verdict from the voters? Well, I still believe we can get to a majority uh, on Monday. And today is Monday. So we are going to see how people come out and uh, go to the polls. Uh, Elections Canada really had an opportunity to open the polls with advanced polls, students. So I'm really hoping tonight we'll see how people are going to... Right, but I guess what I'm saying, they're going to, if, the, if it's a minority parliament, there's going to be, and I don't want to get too deep into the weeds of procedure, but at the end of the day, it'll be somebody tries to get the confidence of the House or we're back into another yep. election. So yep. what should be the priority? Another election or get the confidence? Try to make this parliament work because that's what Canadians sent trying to make this parliament work. All right, Mr. Canadians. Cook, how about you? We'll want that. Uh, 2015, 
Canadians uh, voted against their best interests to try and make it the last election first past the post because they want Parliament to work. This election, if they send a minority, they're saying, we want Parliament to work. Um, the folks don't want another election. They don't want to see all the signs up on the streets again. They don't want to see politicians uh, repeating their promises that, they, that they're doing here today. Uh, what they want is they want to see politicians follow through, work together, and get things done. All right. Thank you all. John Barlow in Alberta. Uh, Mr. Barlow, good luck. Thanks for your time. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks, and, Peter. Uh, uh, maybe see you on the other side. We'll see what happens tonight. And to all of my guests here in the studio, thank Looking you all. Mona Forza, Angela McEwen, and Jean-Luc Cook. Take care. Thank, thank you, you for having us.